Welcome back to Fascinating History. Today we take an exciting journey through the history of love and marriage for Native Americans. The beginning of the 16th century saw over 600 different tribes in North America, ranging from northern Canada down to Central America. Estimates of the total population are anywhere from 10 to 20 million. That's quite a lot of people, and with that much diversity, they had many different cultures and customs. A lot of the more interesting ones revolved around love and marriage. Did you know that in some Native American tribes, it was the women, not the men, who chose their partners, turning the tables on traditional marriage norms? In today's deep dive, we're exploring the diverse and often surprising world of love and marriage among Native American tribes. From the flute courtship rituals of the Great Plains to the polygamous practices of the Apache, we'll uncover how these rich traditions varied widely across different cultures and regions. So, what did love and marriage look like for Native Americans? Well, let's get started. The flute courtship ritual among Native American tribes is a fascinating and culturally rich tradition that underscores the importance of music in expressing love and emotions within these communities. This practice, particularly prevalent among tribes of the Great Plains such as the Kiowa, Comanche, Navajo, and Sioux, involved young men playing the flute to woo potential partners, conveying their feelings and intentions through the language of music. In these societies, the flute wasn't merely a musical instrument but a communication tool, a means of expressing one's heart and soul. The ritual began with a man crafting his flute, a process imbued with symbolic significance. Making the flute was as important as playing it, as it represented the man's dedication, skill, and creativity, all qualities desirable in a partner. The flutes were often made from cedar, known for their aromatic and durable qualities. They were beautifully decorated with personal and tribal motifs, adding a layer of individuality and cultural identity to their courtship process. Once the flute was ready, the suitor would play it near the home of the woman he was interested in, often at night. The melodies were composed to convey specific messages, from declarations of love to expressions of longing and devotion. The music allowed the man to showcase his artistic ability and emotional depth, qualities valued in a partner. It was believed that the flute's music could reach the listener's heart, making it a powerful medium for courtship. Upon hearing the music, the women had the agency to respond or not, reflecting the reciprocal nature of courtship in these cultures. If a woman was moved by the music and interested in the suitor, she might signal her acceptance, leading to further romance and marriage. This practice allowed for profoundly personal and emotional communication, transcending the spoken word. Cherokee Stickball, known as Ani Jodi, or Little Brother of War, is a traditional Native American game deeply rooted in the cultural and social fabric of the Cherokee people. This game, more than just a sport, encapsulates various aspects of Cherokee life, including courtship, spiritual beliefs, and community relations. Historically, stickball originated thousands of years ago and was played by several southeastern tribes, including the Cherokee. The game was multifaceted in its purposes. It was a method for resolving intertribal conflicts, a ceremonial act to honor the creator, and a crucial element in the courtship rituals of young Cherokee men and women. In the context of courtship, stickball presented an opportunity for young men to demonstrate their physical prowess, courage, and skill. These attributes were highly valued and indicative of a man's ability to provide for and protect a family. Observing the games, young women could gauge potential suitors' qualities. The game thus became a stage where physical abilities intertwined with the social ritual of selecting a partner. The spiritual aspect of stickball is deeply ingrained in the Cherokee belief system. The game reflects the Cherokee's dualistic worldview, which sees the universe as a balance of opposing forces, the red force symbolizing war, aggression, and destruction, and the white force representing peace, creation, and cooperation. Stickball embodies this duality, with each team representing one of these cosmic forces. The game was a physical contest and a spiritual ceremony, balancing these opposing elements. Before the game, a ritual dance called Saloli was performed. This all-night event involved conjurers singing and dancing until dawn, with men and women playing distinct roles. 
Men's songs and dances aimed to empower their team, while women sought to weaken the opposing team. This ritual was a spiritual preparation for the game, aligning the community and honoring the spirits believed to be present. The game itself was vigorous and physical. Players used sticks to maneuver a ball, traditionally made of deerskin or stuffed with hair, aiming to score by hitting it through a goalpost. The playing field was often large, with teams from different villages or tribes competing. Despite its rough nature, the game had strict rules and was seen as a peaceful way to resolve conflicts. The Haudenosaunee, commonly known as the Iroquois Confederacy, presents a fascinating example of a matrilineal society where women were pivotal in family and political structures. This system, deeply embedded in their culture, offers a stark contrast to the patriarchal norms prevalent in many other societies, including those of European settlers in North America. In Haudenosaunee culture, lineage and inheritance were traced through the female line. This structure meant that women were central to the continuity and identity of the clan. Children were born into their mother's clan, and her lineage was considered their primary identity. This system ensured that property, status, and family roles were passed down through the women, giving them significant control over resources and decision-making within the clan. Women in Haudenosaunee society were responsible for the domestic sphere, which held much more significance than the term implies in a modern context. They were in charge of farming, food preparation, and child rearing, effectively controlling the economic backbone of the society. Their role in managing the agricultural activities, primarily cultivating the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, was crucial for the community's sustenance and prosperity. The most striking aspect of the Haudenosaunee matrilineal system was the political power wielded by women. Women were not merely advisors, they had the authority to nominate and depose the male chiefs who represented the clans in the Grand Council. This council, composed of representatives from each of the six nations of the Confederacy, Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora, was responsible for making significant decisions. The female elders, often called clan mothers, had the final say in selecting these leaders and could hold them accountable, ensuring they acted in the clan's best interest. In matters of marriage, women had considerable autonomy. They could choose their partners and were also responsible for the home. The women retained all property, including the children, if a marriage dissolved. This practice underscored the respect and independence afforded to women in their society. The Haudenosaunee women's societal role significantly influenced the early women's rights movements in the United States. In the mid-19th century, suffragists like Matilda Jocelyn Gage and Elizabeth Cady Stanton interacted with the Haudenosaunee and were deeply inspired by the egalitarian gender roles they observed. These interactions helped shape their views on women's rights and suffrage. The Haudenosaunee served as a living example that women could effectively participate in governance and decision-making challenging the prevailing patriarchal norms of the time. Despite the pressures of colonization and the imposition of European cultural norms, the Haudenosaunee have worked to preserve their matrilineal system and the influential role of women in their society. This preservation is not just about maintaining tradition, it's a testament to a belief system that values balance, respect, and the integral role of women in all aspects of life. Polygamy was a common practice among the Apache, as in many other Native American tribes. This practice wasn't merely a matter of personal choice or romantic desire. It was deeply embedded in the social and economic fabric of Apache life. Having multiple wives was often seen as a symbol of wealth and status. A man with several wives could support a more prominent family, which was advantageous for various reasons, including labor for hunting, gathering, and defending the tribe. In Apache culture, marriage was often viewed more as a social contract than a romantic union. Families typically arranged marriages to forge alliances, settle disputes, or strengthen social bonds within the tribe. This pragmatic approach to marriage meant that emotional compatibility was only sometimes the primary consideration. Instead, the focus was often on the practical benefits the union could bring individuals and their families. Women in polygamous marriages had specific roles and responsibilities. In Apache society, each wife usually had her dwelling where she lived with her children. 
The husband would move between these households, providing for each family. Women were responsible for the domestic sphere, including child rearing, cooking, and home maintenance. They also played a significant role in gathering food and crafting items necessary for daily life. Marriage in Apache culture was not only a social or economic arrangement, but also had spiritual and ritualistic dimensions. Apache weddings involved ceremonies and rituals that were deeply symbolic and reflected the tribe's spiritual beliefs. These rituals often included blessings by spiritual leaders, exchanges of gifts, and communal celebrations. The spiritual aspect of marriage underscored the importance of these unions in the broader context of Apache cosmology and worldview. The practice of polygamy among the Apache, as with many other aspects of their culture, was significantly impacted by colonization and forced assimilation efforts. As European and later American influences permeated Native American societies, many traditional practices, including polygamy, came under pressure. Government policies, missionary activities, and the imposition of Western norms gradually eroded these conventional marriage practices. Over time, monogamy became more prevalent, and polygamous marriages declined. Today, the Apache, like many Native American tribes, exhibit a range of marriage practices influenced by both traditional customs and modern societal norms. While polygamy is no longer widespread, its historical role in Apache society is recognized as an integral part of their cultural heritage. Contemporary Apache marriages often blend traditional elements with modern practices, reflecting the ongoing evolution of their cultural identity in a changing world. So, how do you think these enduring traditions and values have shaped modern perspectives on love and marriage? Let us know down below, and as always, see you in the next video.